everybody welcome back to another episode of simply unprofessional i'm your host webby and joining me tonight we got devin hey everybody what's up oh good timing devin so devin we're kind of on a on a crunch here but we got another 25 list this is the 25 according to this list most powerful superheroes of all time okay i have not looked past the first page on this list so or it's going to be kind of, I guess, touch and go there for a while when we get towards the end of it. It's going to be touch and go. But we're going to try to breeze through this list. I know the last couple of 25 list ones that we've done have been pretty long, uh, but we're going to get through this. So jumping right in, we got number 25 with Namor. I don't know much about Namor except for the fact that he's the Marvel's Aquaman. He is. Um, he is basically the first mutant. Okay, I um, do remember that part. Yes, he is apparently the the earliest superhero, of the one of the earliest superheroes in Marvel Universe. Uh, I do like him later. I don't like in the picture they have him on here where they have like you know, a little like scale green speedo. Yeah, like the scale green speedo. I'm not my fan, but he's a, like cool like black one piece. Uh, I mean, but yeah, I mean, he's pretty powerful. He's tussled with the Hulk. Yeah. Um, he's, he's now, does he, have, does he essentially have any powers that Aquaman does not? Um, I know he can fly. Oh, all right. I mean, that's something I didn't know. That's literally a fish out of water. He has little like, wings on his feet and he can fly. Like hmm. King Hermes. Yeah. Uh, and it's all part of his powers. It's weird. I don't know. All um, right. but yeah, I mean, he can fly. I know he's super freaking powerful. He apparently has a short uh, fuse because he's a stereotypical he, anti-hero. He does. He, does. Uh, he can absorb radiation. I mean, that's useful. That is. All right. Um, he has longevity. Uh, does that just mean he can live for a long time? Yeah, he's been around as, a, as an Atlantean. All right. So, yeah. He's incapable of growing a beard? Yes. I've never seen a picture with him with facial hair. Uh, I think you're right. I think so. that's a fact. So. All right. Well, I mean, one of old Marvel's oldest characters, regardless. I mean, in definitely one of their powerhouses. Like, yeah. definitely a powerhouse when Namor comes in. If he comes in to, like, wreck up the X-Men or something, like, it's, it's <clears> getting <throat> real. Like, it's getting real. He's definitely a powerhouse character. Can definitely be done. Hmm. All right, moving on. Number 24, we got Captain Marvel. Uh, in lieu of her movies coming out here shortly, right? I think so. Maybe. It's one of the next movies coming out, I think. Yeah. As far as Marvel movies, I think. Or am yep. I thinking mm-hmm. of the wrong thing? That is Captain Not, Marvel, right? No, uh, Ant-Man's the next Marvel movie coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Then I think she's after Ant-Man. All right, so uh, I again, I don't know too too much about Captain Marvel. Uh, she's been Miss Marvel. Uh, her name is Carol Danvers, which is really strange because I always get her mixed up now uh, because of the Supergirl show. And there's the Danvers sisters. Yeah, yep, yep. It's like ah, uh, no, but she's in Marvel comics. All right, she was an Air Force pilot. Uh, she became a CIA agent, and she works for NASA apparently. Um, now, is it true? I read something where she's actually, even though she's called Captain Marvel, she's actually a rank higher than Captain. I believe that's correct. In her military branch. I believe that is correct. Yes. So if her and Captain America were in the same branch of the military, which they're not, then she would actually outrank Captain America. Yes. That's fucked up. Yes, if Captain America, I don't think he, I don't think he had his official military rank anymore. 
Like I think yeah. he's just accepted as Captain America. Like I don't think he. I think he outranks most people. Um, she has the powers of super strength, flight, energy blasts. Really, she can shoot energy blasts. Yes, she can. Uh, and we hope to see her in Avengers Four. So yeah, there's that. What kind of energy blast does she shoot out? Does it come out like of her hands? Y- yeah, like these yellow energy blasts to shoot out of her hands. Up. Who would win in a fight? Her or Captain America? Not her. She's stronger. Are you sure? Because Captain America punched Hitler. That's fine. And he's she, a Nazi. She's stronger. <laughs> Faster. Okay. Uh, 23, he's Firestorm. Uh, Firestorm is a DC character. For those of you who watched Flash and or uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, unlike su- other superheroes, Firestorm is actually two people that, when combined, create a super being with the ability to rearrange matter on a molecular level. If it weren't for the fact that he were limited to non-organic material, he would probably be a lot closer to the number one powerhouse of this list. He's effectively a weaker molecule, man. So, <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't want. mind what they did with uh, Firestorm in Legends of Tomorrow. I just I, only reason why I mind they did a Firestorm Legend tomorrow because he 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 was too expensive to have on the show all the time. Yeah. So he never got used. Like yeah. <laughs> very rarely got used. He was just too expensive to use on on the show. So they really pulled him out for big battles, which made him special. But I felt like when he was used in the big battles, he didn't add much to him. Yeah. I, also, I'm not gonna lie. Looking at this picture that they posted, if I didn't know anything about him and I looked at this picture, I'd think he was a super villain. He just looks like a supervillain to me. I don't know. Uh, Anyway, number 22, moving on the list, Iron Man. I'm really kind of surprised that he's so far up this list, actually. Iron Man is pretty cool. Uh, I know it all comes down to essentially the suit and who he's going against that determines his quote-unquote powerfulness, I guess, but... Still, Tony Stark seems to have a gadget for every occasion, almost. What do you have to say about Iron Man, Devin? I mean, he's Iron Man. Uh, it says on here he's also shown that he has enough swag to get his own list. So he doesn't need this list. <laughs> so we know. Um, Given the fact that he's constantly evolving, he wouldn't be surprised to see him continue crawling up the power charts. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. Like, I really think he should be higher on this list, personally. 22, that seems kind of low. I mean, he's smart, and yeah, but I mean, in general, in terms of being an actual superhero, he doesn't bring a lot to the table in terms of superhero-ness. No, but like, if he he's essentially... Not to even remotely put him on the same level as Batman, but like if he has time, if he has, if he has the ability to prepare for something, dude, he's gone toe to toe with Thor. He's gone toe to toe with the Hulk, albeit not for very long, but still, he had like the Hulkbuster armor. You know, like he's a genius and he can account for a lot of different things. So, I don't. Know, I just I think. I, Let's see who's further down this list, and I'll see if Iron if I feel Iron Man would be better than them. Uh, number twenty more twenty one is your boy Aquaman. Yeah, you. Um, again, same type of thing as Namor. He has super strength and vulnerability, et cetera, et cetera. Well, Does he has? Have... Okay, there goes my question. Uh, let's see. It says another Atlantean. Aquaman's powers have at times been underestimated. Uh, Anyone that was born in a place capable of literally crushing even the most advanced of human technology is probably going to end up somewhere on this page. Which is true. I find it kind of weird. Aquaman's a DC character. And, like, so DC has their Atlantean, and Marvel has their Atlantean, but I don't know if they've ever actually clashed. I'm sure there was a crossover where they have. Devin would probably know, but we're going to move on. We'll come back to his comments when he comes back. It was very unprofessional of him to answer a phone, but it is what it is. This is simply unprofessional anyway. Uh, Next is 20 with a DC Comics, Dr. Manhattan from The Watchmen. Um, Yeah, I don't know much about this either. I actually haven't read The Watchmen. I've watched the movie, uh, but I actually I don't think I've ever 
fully read the comic or the graphic novel. Uh, when it comes to pure, raw, unadulterated power, there are few people that even come close to the Doctor. In fact, there's almost no defined limit to what he can do. Uh, the reason okay. that he is number 20, however, is due to his primary weakness besides tachyons, uh, apathy. In spite of being able to annihilate essentially the entire universe, he just doesn't care enough about much of anything and would prefer to be left alone. <laughs> I think if Devin was a super-powered superhero, he would be this guy. He'd just be like, dude, Who? you, uh, uh, Dr. Manhattan. His, no! Well, the reason I say that is because they say his his primary weakness is apathy. Uh, in spite of being able to annihilate essentially the I mean, entire universe, I, he just I, I does not like, yeah, care no, I'm, enough I'm about good. anything. <laughs> I'm good. Like, and he just wants to be true. left alone. Uh, jumping back I, real I quick. Him, though. Like, he's later down the list, but just well, hang around in the star all day. <laughs> jumping, jumping back to number 21 real quick, uh, Aquaman. Uh, first off, does he have longevity too, just like Namor? Uh, I think, yeah, they're both... I think is that's more the Atlantean mm. side of them than anything. All right. Now, answer and me this. And I'm, sh- and I'm sure... My guess was I'm sure it has happened. But... What? Aquaman is a DC Atlantean. Namor is a Marvel Atlantean. Have they ever met and or clashed? I do not know the answer to that question. No. Okay. He's going to look it up right now. I can hear him typing. No, I'm not looking that up right now. No, all right. Never mind. I'm pr- I promise you I'm not. Well, then we will move um, on down the list, and we just won't answer that question. I'm sure I some could... listener out there will tell us if they hey, have. If you want to know, um, has Aquaman and Namor ever met? Wow, 19. Another shocker for me. I figured she'd be higher up on the list, too. We must really start getting into some <clears throat> real heavy hitters. Uh, yes, many years ago there was a crossover comic. If you like to read more, yeah, I figured it was during one of those. There crossovers. was a crossover comic many years ago. Um, things happen. Yeah, that's know. fine. Like I said, we're breezing through this one. Uh, again, number nineteen, Phoenix. I really thought this one would be further down the list. Um, Phoenix is one of my favorite. Uh. Marvel characters, I'll say. It's like she's redhead, of course she is. Of course she is. Oh, yeah, she's a sweet ass, hot redhead, and the phoenix is my favorite mythological creature. So it's a mixture of both great things. Uh, I tell you right now, this list is kind of skewed. I wouldn't put. Don't put this list in any particular order. That's all I'm going to say. Well, I mean, in the order that they've put it, I'm already questioning it. So I'm looking at number seventeen. Well, hold on, we'll get there. Other people, we'll, we'll, get there. we'll, we'll get there as. as Phoenix goes as one of the most powerful telepaths in the universe. Jean Grey sometimes has trouble keeping her nearly unlimited mental powers in check. Professor X was even forced to construct a psychic shield in her mind as a child in order to prevent her from fully realizing her power until she was mature enough to handle it on her own. It's like, hey, you got some deep shit going on in your mind. Let me just like Rubik's Cube that shit in. And when you're old enough, you can figure out how to unlock that shit and deal with it. Cope like a regular adult. (laughs) Uh, and then she couldn't cope, and she turned into the Phoenix. So, uh, Captain Adam, Devin, why don't you take this one? Captain Adam, I love Captain Adam. He's dope. Um, effectively, huh? Nothing. Go ahead. You hate everybody. I, I love. Webby. That's what the <laughs> situation is. Um, but no, Captain Adam's dope. I mean, he has a uh, he has a theoretical unlimited amount of energy. Essentially, a combination of Superman and the Silver Surfer. Surfer. Captain Adam is sometimes seen as a second-rate Man of Steel. His powers are formidable, however, with the ability to manipulate theoretically unlimited amounts of Because he draws his, uh, I think it's, what, he draws, uh, what, oh, energy force. He draws from, like, actual, is it thermal? Not thermal. I can't think right now. I thought it was radiation charges. It is radiation. It's all, but it's all types of, is that just, uh, like, one, it's all types of radiation? So I was like, he can pull, he can pretty much do anything he wants to Isn't do. Isn't this the guy, like you, like, you can't really spend too much time around this guy? Like, yes, uh, like you'll start like a, getting radiation like, poisoning. <laughs> for instance, yes. If for instance, if he, uh, he will he will explode into like a big bang explosion if you tear his containment suit. Oh Jesus! Yeah, it's it's fucked up. 
Uh, he does turn into one of my favorite villains of all time. Let's just um, throw a nuclear reactor around there, flying around, beating bad guys uh, up. Imagine. Um, yeah, the, uh, he is one of my favorite... Nu- he turns into one of my favorite villains, though. I'm trying to think what the dude is. Um, Superboy Prime. Trying, not Superboy Prime. Super Prime versus... Is it Devastator? Who, who, who's he turning to? Cool. He turned into a problem, is what he turned into. Well, it was an alternate version of him, like another world re- re- version of him. You know, one person who could hang out with him for a longer period of time than most, Mr. Colossus, that's all I'm going to say. Because he can actually absorb some radiation. Like, he's resistant to it. Anyway, True. I learned that in a video game. Anyway, uh, number 17 on the list, Wolverine. I know this is John's favorite character. It's one of my favorite X-Men. He's Canadian, that's why. Yeah. Um, All that Canadian love. Although Wolverine doesn't have any typical superhero powers, which is not true, it's the intangibles that put him on the list. What he lacks in raw power, he makes up for in pure fury and an epic complex backstory. Uh, And as we've seen with Dr. Manhattan, attitude is half the battle. See, on the contrary, Wolverine actually has a couple different superpowers. Uh, First is his healing factor. Uh, that's right off the bat. Second, he does possess superhuman strength, which is the whole reason he's capable of moving with the adamantium skeleton on him. Because uh, that shit, if he did not possess super strength, he would not be able to move. <laughs> right. So, uh, so, yeah. Along with, like, heightened sense of smell of... Uh, Everybody, it seems like every fucking superhero has increased or a heightened sense of agility. Uh, like, they're all capable of doing flips. They're all fucking, you know, I don't know, super agile. I don't like it. Agreed. Let's just let's just do a 450, you know, sent on splash off the top rope fucking flawlessly. <sighs> reference, wrestling reference for you guys. Anyway, I probably got the move wrong anyway. 450s. No. Uh, Mr. Majestic. Ah, I see the guy coming around. I love Mr. Okay, Majestic. Okay, go ahead and take Mr. Majestic. I know nothing. Mr. Majestic about comes from one of my favorite was he, verses of all time. They were popular in the 90s. Hold on. Is uh, it Marvel comes, DC or? It technically is DC, but it's technically um falls under Wildstorm. Okay. The Wildstorm universe. Right. I love Wildstorm Universe the most out of everything because my favorite hero of all time comes from there, Backlash. Get at me if I fight me on that. All right. I, mean, I don't know. Sure. Uh, anyway, Mr. Majestic is basically a stronger version of Superman. And I, I know when I say that, his he just is a better character. Like, it's hard to describe him exactly. As one of the most powerful superheroes in the Wildstorm Universe, Mr. Majestic bears a deliberate resemblance to Superman with essentially all of his powers. We just couldn't rank a copy above the man himself. He is a copy. His character is a thousand times better, like, in just personality was. I feel Superman has no personality. He's a flying brick through and through with no person. I mean, maybe. I don't, I don't like Superman. I, I don't <clears throat> like him. I, I feel he has direct problems. But there's people in the, in the adverse that can fight him. Right. He's actually an alien. He's a Carib. He's a Carib Magister. Okay. The Carib Magister, which is a whole other conversation. We're not going to sidetrack on this. All right. So yeah, but I mean, who I like. Him. We'll maybe he's pretty. We'll... He he is very powerful. He 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 fights universal threats in that book. He's powerful. I'll tell sure. you what, Devin. For the listeners, what we'll do when you and I have a little bit more time, and maybe I'll get my buddy Ross in on this because I've wanted to talk to him about some superhero stuff as well. Me and you will come up with our own twenty-five list. Like we'll actually collaborate and think of who we think are the most powerful superheroes or villains. I, I guess these uh, are just superheroes. Yeah, superheroes. We'll just stick with superheroes for right now. We'll come up with our own twenty-five list. We'll do an episode on that, which will have some of these, but we'll go. We'll actually be able to go a little bit more in depth and tell why. Oh, agreed. Okay, so number fifteen, Professor X himself. Uh, As the most powerful telepath in the universe, Professor X has not only been responsible for the training of many other powerful mutants, but for their protection as well. Dude, you do not want to get into a mental showdown with this guy. He will fucking put on a mental plate, like plate armor, and whoop your ass. I think the Phoenix might be able to take him, which is several conversations. I mean, yeah. I mean, isn't she like the fact that she's ranked lower on the list? Yeah, I don't understand that either. Anyway. Uh, number 14, Wonder Woman. 
Uh, Wonder Woman has taken the superhero movie genre by storm in the Wonder Woman movie. Essentially, a combination of Superman's powers and Batman's fighting skills. The one thing keeping Wonder Woman from ranking any higher is her lack of perfect invulnerability. She granted um, she can certainly withstand more than her share of blunt force trauma, but a really sharp weapon could do some damage. Um, I like the one comic strip I read. <laughs> Never mind, I won't bring that up. Uh, I'll talk to you after about it. Uh, yeah, I liked the Wonder Woman movie. She's, I, I, I don't mind her placement. I never understood the whole invisible jet thing, like from way back in the day, because she can't she fly? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thirteen Spawn. Uh, there's apparently a new remake coming out. Jamie Fox. I like Spawn. Spawn. I like I, Spawn. I do like Spawn. I remember watching all of the HBO shows. Um way back in the day and read, yep. read the, the animated and movie stuff. animated tv series the fucking um um mercilessly the, TV series, the movies were dope yeah. i liked it mercilessly executed by his own men al simmons was once the government's top soldier and most effective assassin while in hell he made a deal with the devil that would grant him the ability to do virtually anything that he wanted the catch was that his powers would eventually run out and drag him back to the pit from whence he came. So I True. thought that was one of the coolest aspects of an anti-hero, essentially, is the fact that he had these powers, but the more he used the powers, the closer he was to draining It's funny because they eventually broke that because he eventually became God. Well, I did not get to that part in the comics, so thanks to that, I guess. <laughs> anyway, Jamie Foxx is playing Spawn in the next movie, I think, from what I read. Yes, that's true. I don't mind that. I a lot of people Me, are like, I like it up in arms about that. I don't like I don't mind it. I like Jamie I Fox. think it'll work fine for him. Uh number twelve, Martian Manhunter. Uh quick shout out. I love the guy who plays Martian Manhunter and how they did it on Supergirl the show. Uh even when he turns into Martian Manhunter, they actually he looks like the Martian Manhunter. Um uh, they did a phenomenal job. Anyway, second only to Dr. Manhattan in terms of sheer ability. The Manhunter owns a laundry list of super, super man-ish superpowers. Uh, it doesn't stop there, though. He also has nine different senses, powerful telepathic skills, and the ability to regenerate himself. His one drawback that I like, he's fucking scared shitless of fire. I, right? That is him, right? Yep. Yeah. It's this whole race, and, they, and it's because, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's because they can't stand the heat because they're not used to the intense heat that would be the differential between, I think, Mars and Earth and how closer to the sun. So, like, they can deal with that slight adjustment. Oh, I thought it was more like a mental thing with him. It is. It, it is. They mentally. It, it's a mental thing. It is a mental thing very much. But it is. Oh. It, it, I think it, it was weird. I think it originally stemmed from like the heat or something like that, and they made it into a mental thing. Oh, maybe because I thought he was like essentially invul- like pretty much like super. It's like, all invulnerable. Martians. It's not just him. It's all Martians. Right, but I thought he was like pretty much invulnerable to being hurt by fire. It's just a mental like he'll have like a complete mental breakdown around fire. Yeah, no, no, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, yeah. I think at one point in time, it was actually like a fire hurt. I could be wrong right. on that. I well, we'll, we'll dig into it. Lot. I wouldn't mind doing an episode on him. I, li- I like Marshall Manhunter. Same here. Uh, number 11, Hulk. I'm really surprised that he didn't make top 10. He missed it by one, though. Uh, with nearly unlimited strength, rapid tissue regeneration powers, and inexhaustible stamina, fighting against the Hulk is just an all-around bad idea. The main reason he doesn't rank any higher, though, is due to his lack of other superpowers and the angst of Bruce Banner. While he outranks most almost everyone in strength, pure muscle can sometimes only take you so far. Uh, The Hulk, I think, has been written by so many different writers over the years that he is one of the the most he, he's one character that has the most wide range set of powers and abilities based off of different writers giving them to him. So it's really hard to staple down like, Oh, who would win in a fight between the Hulk and so-and-so because it really depends on which writer of the Hulk we're using because dude, there's one that he literally punches reality and he breaks reality. That's how strong he is. <laughs> like, okay. So, 
I will say like that's been a common thing that like, we've talked about that recently too, Devin, like how different writers give different powers to some of these superheroes. But I've I've just never seen such a laundry list of different abilities from the any other character than the Hulk. True. Uh why don't you take the next one? Uh number ten? Yeah. Number ten, 10 is Green Lantern. I actually like the Green Lantern. Um, I, I did like not like the movie. No, 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 no. I like some Green Lanterns more than other Green Lanterns. If I had to list them in order, probably John Stewart, Kyle Rayner, then Hal Jordan. I like Hal Jordan a lot. I like all of them a lot, but it's yeah. just terms of ring. But that's my order. Anyway, point being is, in possession of the most powerful weapon in the universe, the power ring wielded by the Green Lantern grants him abilities that are seemingly limited, limited only by his imagination. Pretty much true. He also, he's also one of the key figures in the DC Universe. The only real downside is that, like any other super cool gadget, it has to be recharged and usually when it's needed the most. Yep. And that's where the lantern actually comes in. They have little portable lanterns that they can recharge their rings at. Yep. And the thing about them is, you know, they the Green Lanterns can effectively do anything they want. They can make complex machinery, simple machinery. They can do whatever they want with their powers. Um, you know, as long as they can imagine it. And they have, you know, will. Yeah, because the it. green the green ones are all based off of willpower. Willpower. Just There's actually willpower. a whole spectrum. There's like nine of them. There's nine or ten other cores yeah. that are based off other emotions like lust. You know, we should probably just do a full episode just on the lanterns. I'm okay with this. We'll do that. Because okay. I, do, I do really like the green lantern. You uh, can take the next one, by the way. All right. Oh, I fucking love this one. This one, hands down, my favorite DC character ever. Um, the Flash, number nine. Uh, by tapping into the f- speed force, Wally can run, think, and act faster than light itself. And as impressive as that is, it doesn't end there. He can also move through time, phase through matter, and even read acquire knowledge at hyper accelerated rates. Not necessarily Wally. I was always a Barry Allen fan. Um, there have been many different flashes. Uh,. There's, I'm not going to get into the whole list of, that would be another whole fucking SU. I'm going to do the Flash one. Anyway, not just the show, but like just the characters themselves. I, I just love the ability to run as fast as they do. Um, The age old question between who's faster for the Flash or Superman. Uh... Every time it has been brought up in a show or movie or even kind of at a com- in a comic book, they c- kind of always seem to leave it open-ended. Um, Bear back. Huh? Bear back. Oh, all right. Um, my favorite was in one of the Smallville episodes, <clears throat> Clark Kent met a character, and they started running, and they were running super fast, and then the one who was playing the Flash, who was carrying a backpack, just kind of sprinted ahead of Clark, turned around, started running backwards, just kind of showboating. Um, personally, I think the Flash will always be faster than Superman. Anyway, uh, number eight, Black Bolt. This is a character I don't know much about. Uh, let's see, what do they say? As the king of a certain offshoot of humanity known as the Inhumans, the, the Black Bolt has been described even by other superheroes, as one of the most powerful beings in the universe. Capable of some serious energy manipulation, the Bolt can use this power to increase any of his abilities to ridiculous levels. His greatest weapon, however, is his thunderous voice. Even a whisper has shown itself capable of shattering the Hulk's bones, and it is it has been said that a shout would destroy the entire planet. Jesus. Alright, so the lungs on this guy... He's like the Black Canary turned up to a thousand. Uh, number seven, Franklin Richards, the son of Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman, Sue Storm. Uh, Franklin has long been considered the most powerful Earth-bound mutant in the Marvel Universe when it comes to unrealized potential. Uh, he can only move up from there. I don't know much about him. Who? Who? Uh, Franklin Richards. The Franklin character. Richards is literally the strongest character possibly in the entire Marvel Universe. Really? Um, yes, he is the strongest mutant by far. Because hmm. um, we just can... read about Black Bolt being able to 
blow up the planet and essentially yeah, no, shatter see, the Hulk. <laughs> uh, Franklin Richards, when he was an infant, made pocket dimensions. Ah. It made a whole other world, like with people. Mm, <laughs> so he's essentially like a mini god. He you no, know, uh, he actually is recognized by like the Living Tribunal and people like that. They speak to him like he's their equal. Jesus. Right. Yeah, he's fucking powerful. He's fucking powerful. So he, like, beings on the living tribunal level <laughs> speak to him like he's our equal. Like, so uh, yeah. really confused why he's only in number seven then, <laughs> right? Uh, number six, Doctor Strange, considered the Sorcerer Supreme. Doctor Strange's powers rank right up there with Doctor Manhattan. The only thing that he that could hold him back is the fact that he's normal human playing with magic. Uh, yeah, but he does some gnarly shit, and I think he's. Definitely up there with, like we talked about before, the list of the smartest people, at least especially mm-hmm. in his field. Um, in, in magic and being a doctor, yeah, he, he was a great surgeon prior. So. Uh, oh, this is isn't this your boy? Why don't, why don't you Ooh. take number five, Sentry? Which number? Number five. Number five. You're on the next page. Oh God. Don't you don't you love this guy? Isn't he like one I, of your favorites? I hate the Sentry. Are you sure? Didn't we have this conversation? Sentry, an enigma sort. Sentry is so powerful that even he surprised himself with his own abilities at times. His primary weakness, however, is being his fragile mind. Although he once wiped his own existence from the memory of every person superhero in the universe, his personal mental health issues are his downfall. Effectively, he was a drug addict who got who make, who got his hands on a like million times stronger version of Captain America Super Sorcerer, and uh, basically became almost like almost godlike. And he became a superhero. Yeah. Wow. All right. It sounds. He became a super dick. He became All a super right. dick. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I read about him when you talked about it, and I really don't like the character. Um. Number four, Silver Surfer. Uh, I was actually told that they are possibly making a standalone film with him. Um, not sure any type of credibility to that. It was just something that I read on the internet. And hey, you know, internet can't believe everything you read. Anyway, with this guy, the question is more of what can he not do than what he can. As a result of his ability to tap into the power cosmic, he supposedly has access to nearly unlimited amount of power. The only reason he doesn't rank any higher is because of his inconsistency. Sometimes he seems to like he. Sh- oh, wait a minute. Sometimes he seems to like he should be number one or two and three, while at other what? times I don't understand this fucking sentence. Sometimes that is bad editing. Bad editing. That's, that's, bad right. What are they even trying to say? Sometimes it Sometimes seems like he like, should be one, two, yeah. and three, while at other one, times two, three, well, you other wonder, wonder if he should be on this list. Yeah, that's a really bad sentence. That really is. But if you read it at face value, the sentence is this. Sometimes he seems to like he should be number one, two, and three, while at other times you wonder if he should even be on this list. That's horrible. Anyway... Uh, yeah, he was Galactus's bitch for a while, and then he turned on him, and so now he's just cruising the cosmos on his silver surfboard, doing his thing. Uh, I'll let you take number three, because you love number three a lot. God. Number three, Superman. Fucking, we hate him. Who you, cares? Well, let's move you on. You all know Superman. Moving on. Moving on. Number two. I fucking disagree. Way. If we're taking somebody out of the... Dragon Ball Universe and tossing them on this goddamn list, it's Piccolo. Fuck Goku. You heard me. Everybody out there who watches Dragon Ball, Goku sucks. Okay? Period. Him and his... Why does he have blue ass hair? He doesn't... He shouldn't have blue hair. Fuck it. That's Super Saiyan God form. I don't care. Piccolo would just fucking sneeze and fucking blow a hole through his chest. That's all I'm saying. Moving on. Number one, Thor. So... This list is dumb. A Marvel superhero, Thor is the Norse god of thunder. Thor is not only invincible in almost every sense of the word, but he takes the meaning of skilled warrior to an entirely new level. Moreover, he has a hammer. I mean, not even more. He has a hammer that gives him almost absolute control over space and time. In fact, this guy is so powerful that it could be a challenge to write a comic that involves him being in any believable amount of danger whatsoever. 
Uh, well, not true. I not mean, at all. Sure, he's he's a god, but but it's been established that the been established that the Norse gods in Marvel universe are powerful. There there are stronger mutants than Norse gods. Yes, and not only that, in one of the I want it was either an animated movie or maybe it was a comic, maybe it was both. Uh, there was one where the Hulk was set onto Asgard without. Like he was separated from Bruce Banner, so it was just all out pure rage from the Hulk. And he was leveling Asgard, kicking all of their asses, and almost killed Thor. So he is not necessarily invincible. You know, it, he might be able to take a, a, a good ass whooping. Sure. So can't every, almost everybody else on this list can take a the good only, ass the whooping. Only Thor, the only Thor that would be. On this list, and they're counting that Thor. Maybe is um is God Thor, or what is his name? King Thor. I forgot what it's called. Basically, it's Thor when he has um the the uh, he gets basically gets Odin's power. Um, and he he becomes like a high. He becomes like a Sky Father. He becomes like the actual ruler of Asgard, and he be, he gets super powerful. Is it? I, I always get the. Is it Rune King Thor? There we go. Rune King Thor. Yeah. That is the only version of Thor that possibly could would would, would be the one. I mean, I'm um, not gonna say okay, not only that. Hypothetical, real quick, we're not gonna get too much into this one, but I just want to toss this out there at you, Devin. Yep. Say Thor, because you know he's not gonna be sneaky about it. Because it's not in his nature to do so. Say Thor had a problem with Charles Xavier. Charles Xavier, I feel, could make him think like he's just a, a six-year-old girl. Regular Thor, I would agree. The only thing about him, uh, it, when, if well, we're talking about th- th- regular Thor. We're not talking no, about no, Rune no. Thor. This or is regular Thor, but it was in the comic books. He did eventually. When he became the ruler of Asgard. He got access to the Odin Force. Which basically is Owen's power on top of his power. And for a while, he had that. And yeah, that Thor was very powerful. Okay, was... We're talking about normal-ass Thor, though. Normal-ass Thor. I'm saying, that, I'm, I'm saying that's the only reason why I would see Thor at the top of this list. Normal-ass Thor, it depends. It depends on the writer, honestly. But, I mean, it, if I had to say consistently, I would say yes, you're, you're right. Because he just does not seem like the person who would be super powerful like <laughs> telepath like intellectually <laughs> you know what i mean yep um yeah i don't i mean i don't know man i i definitely don't think thor would be number 1 on my list that's all i'm saying but that is the top 25 list of essentially the most powerful superheroes um I do think Thor would be on my list. He, I do, I do recognize him as probably one of the top twenty-five most powerful. He is a god. Um, I'm glad that this list was all just superheroes, though, and they didn't try to mix in supervillains because then a lot of people probably wouldn't make the list. No, and the top will be really, really limited. Yeah, I think I think the top of the list, like like Dark Side, number one. Yeah, it'd be all down to like. It'd be all super villains, probably. The top five would probably be villains. Yeah, for sure. Um, I sure as fuck won't ever put Goku on my list. And begrudgingly, I would probably have to put Superman on my list, but I fucking hate Superman. Who? who, Why would you like this guy? (laughs) Like, why? What? Because he stands for hope? Yeah, so doesn't Supergirl, and she's hotter. And not only that, I mean, to be fair, Hope's not real. Listen, you're starting <laughs> to sound really apathetic like Dr. Manhattan over there, all right? Hey, just, I'm you, just, you just calm down. I'm going to need you to bring it up a notch. You heard me. So, that was our very quick review of the top 25 superheroes. Um, most powerful superheroes, anyway. Uh, I got one for you, though, Devin. I have a question. What? 
Because, I mean, we talked about, um, like, Namor was named as an anti-hero on here, right? Uh Uh-huh. Where's Ghost Rider? Not on the list. Why is he not on the list? Because Goku's on the list. Fucking Goku. Oh, man. I'm going to blow my brains all over DBZ. You know who could beat Goku in a fight? Fucking Pikachu, if he really wanted to. But Pikachu wouldn't want to because he's a dick and he doesn't ever want to do anything except for just chill out. Which I can appreciate. I'm glad Austin's not on this episode. He'd be fucking fuming at the fact that I hate Goku so much. The reason I hate Goku is because everybody fucking loves Goku. There's a reasoning why Goku versus Superman threads are banned. It's accepted at this point, unless you're just dumb, that Goku loses Superman. Uh, like, it happens. Goku loses flat out to Superman. Get over it. Yeah. Like, and this is coming from someone who actually likes Goku and dislikes Superman. Goku loses to Superman. Goku loses to Piccolo. That's all I care about. I will uh, never, true. I will never change my opinion on that. Ever. That was fun. Piccolo's my man. Special beam cannon. Pew. Yeah, that was my special beam cannon noise. Pew. You like it? Uh-huh. I did it just for you, Devin. Cool. Stop being so apathetic. Start caring cool. about stuff. I care about nothing. <sighs> Except for you. So, yeah, I mean, personally, I think on my list, I'd have Ghost Rider on there. We had that whole conversation about his power, man. It's one of the most powerful things. Ghost Rider, yep. You know, you know the only person who that I think that will have, another person I think that power uh-huh. wouldn't work on? Uh-uh. Heard them belong to his list, and they even threw anti heroes on all. Spectre. Who? Spectre. Oh. Well, I mean, they have put anti-heroes on this list. Right. So I'm saying Spectre should definitely... He should be number one on this list. Well, listen, they probably just stayed away from some of the really high... Oh, they definitely did. But, I mean, if you just read some of Spectre's powers... Like, they didn't They didn't put any of the quote-unquote cosmic beings on this list. Silver Surfer is not considered a cosmic being. He just has access to the power. He is, though. He, he kind of is. Nah, he, he just he not. has the ability to tap into the power cosmic, but he is. But see, Phoenix is also a cosmic being, though. Uh, She's the embodiment of a yeah, cosmic entity. I mean, so it's like. I guess. You do got me there. But, I mean, they have Sentry on there, man. Aren't you happy? No. He's willing to fight crime for heroin. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. They stole my baby. I'll get him back for you, but I really need a fix. <laughs> Looking worst character ever. <sighs> yeah. No. Uh Spectre definitely balls on his list. He's if I was being technical. Spectre, uh, and this is just me being me at this point. If you were going to argue who goes on what list of the top three of DC, not including like uh, the god of DC, but have to go in order. Uh, Michael Demiurgos, Lucifer Morningstar, Spectre. <laughs> yeah, you know who needs to be on this list of most powerful superheroes? What? Fucking Thanos. He's just misunderstood. Okay? Everything he did, he did for love and for the survival of the cosmos. I mean, to be fair, I would destroy an entire universe for tacos, so... Yeah. A lifetime supply of tacos. Yeah. Thanos deserves to be number one. Bam. Anyway, alright, well, we're gonna wrap it up there. Uh, Devin, where can people find you on the internet? You guys can find me on Twitter at DMP underscore Pookie and on Twitch at Pookie Killed Me. And what do we do every week now, Devin? We stream together. Me and we him. Do. We have a duo stream every week. Uh, it's every Friday, even though today we streamed, but hey, tomorrow we might if Devin's free still. Um, 
You guys can follow me on Twitter at Jacks Forest Walker, all one word. Also on Twitch at twitch.tv slash dmwebby. Uh, let's see, what else? Emails, simply unprofessional at gmail.com. Email us anything. Email us and just say hi. I'm letting them build up. I haven't checked it in a little while. Because every time I checked it, I'd get zero. I felt unloved. So... We'll see. I'll check it tonight and see if we get any more. Maybe we'll do another episode uh, for next week's, and we'll read emails. But with that, check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash simplyunprofessional. Give us a like. Uh, if you're listening to this on the podcast, in podcast format, give us a like, a review. Um, if you're listening to this, it's being released on YouTube now, weekly. Uh, if you're listening slash watching this on YouTube, Feel free to give the little thumbs up button, I guess. That's the like thing. Um, no thumbs downs. I don't want to have to hurt you. Don't do it just to prove that I will. <laughs> right, Devin? Yep. Stop being so apathetic. I'm looking for our next topic. All right. And as always, Devin, would you do the honor? Fuck Booster Gold. That's right. Fuck Booster Gold. And Sentry. And Sentry. Fuck Booster Gold. Fuck Booster Gold. And Sentry.